Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about two-step equations as part of equations and formula. If you haven't watched the one-step equation video, please watch that before you go on to this one. Well, as we talked about previously, equations are like a game. It's to get x by itself. And we have two sides of the equal. We have the left-hand side and we have the right-hand side. So our main goal is to get x by itself by getting rid of whatever's with it on that side. Now, we already discussed inverse operations. So you have plus, the opposite of plus is minus, and the opposite of minus is plus. And the opposite of times is divided by and vice versa, and square root and squared. Now, we have two rules that we've already gone through, but let's go through them one more time. Whatever you do on one side, you must do on the other side to balance the equation. It's very important you do that. You leave your answers in exact form, such as fractions or thirds, or if they're terminating decimals. And the new rule here for two-step equations is leave whatever is with the pronumeral to last. And that'll make sense when I go through a few examples. But that's the most important thing you have to remember throughout this video. Leave whatever is with the pronumeral to last. Okay, let's go through a few examples. So it looks a bit messy, but once I explain it, you'll understand what I'm going on about. So let's have a look at example one. So with example one, we have two times x and plus five on this side, on the left-hand side of the equals. Our main goal is to get x by itself. There's two things with x. There's a plus five and there's a times two. Now remember rule number three, leave whatever's directly with the pronumeral to last. So directly with the pronumeral is a two. So I'm going to leave that to last and I'm going to get rid of the plus five first. What's the opposite of plus five? Minus five. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. So to balance the equation, minus five on this side, minus five on that side, and five cancels out here. I'm left with two X equals 16 because 21 minus five is 16. Now, X is still not by itself. With the X, I still have times two. We got rid of the five, but we still have the times two. And this is the second step. And this is why it's called a two-step equation. So the opposite of times two is divided by two. So that fraction line means divided by two. I'm going to divide both sides by two to balance it out. That cancels that out. X equals 16 divided by two, which is eight. That's why it's called a two-step equation, because there's two steps that are required. Let's go through example number two. Now remember, leave whatever's with the pronumeral to last. With directly with the pronumeral is a divided by five. And the plus seven is on that side, but it's not directly with the pronumeral. So the first thing I'm gonna get rid of is that plus seven. The opposite of plus seven is minus seven. So I'm gonna minus seven on both sides. That cancels that out. And X over five remains on this side, which equals minus three minus another seven which is minus 10. Now, x is still not by itself. I have x divided by five still. And that fraction line, remember, means division. The opposite of divided by five is times five. So I'm going to multiply five on both sides. That cancels that out. I'm left with x by itself and minus 10 times five. Use your calculator, check that out, and you'll get minus 50. Let's go on to example three. With example three, again, we leave whatever's with the pronumeral to last. So we leave the five M, the five with the M last, our pronumeral is M, our unknown. We get rid of the plus six. Opposite of plus six is minus six on both sides. Then I'm left with five M equals 10. Five times M equals 10. The opposite of times is divided by, so I divide five on both sides and I get X equals two. Let's make it a little trickier. Now, I have x over six directly with the pronumeral, but I have a plus five in front of it. That's a positive five. If there's no negative in front of it, it's a positive five. What's the opposite of plus five? Minus five. So I'm gonna minus five on both sides, and that gets rid of that, but I'm still left with x divided by six. So the opposite of x divided by six is times six. And I already have the eight here because 13 minus five is eight. So I times sixes on both sides 
and I'm left with x equals 48, with 8 times 6 is 48. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this so far. Well, let's go on to example 5. Now in this question, I have x on the right hand side, not on the left hand side. A little bit trickier, but let's do it. It's the same principle, the same steps, and the same rule. My main goal is to get x by itself. And with the x, I have two things. I have a plus 16, and I also have a negative 1. Now remember, if there's no number there, that is actually a 1. That's negative 1 times x. This is the same as negative 1 times x. So now, I have... The negative 1 times x plus 16, leave whatever's directly with the pronumeral to last. So I'm going to get rid of the plus 16. The op opposite of plus 16 is minus 16. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Well, that gets rid of the 16. But I'm still left with a negative 1 times x. What's the opposite of negative 1 times x? Well, divided by negative 1 on both sides. So now I'm left with 17 divided by negative 1, which is negative 17, and I'm left with x on this side. Now, if negative 17 equals x, that means that x equals negative 17. They're equal to each other, so it doesn't matter which side it's on. Let's go on to example 6. Now, example 6, again, you have negative 3 times x minus 8. Now, the negative 3 times x, leave whatever's directly with the pronumeral to last, get rid of the minus 8, so a plus 8 on both sides. Then I'm left with the green there. That's minus 3 times x, so the opposite of minus 3 times x is divided by negative 3 on both sides, and I get x equals negative 16. Let's make it a little bit harder. So I have x squared plus 2 equals 18. I have two things with the x here. I have a plus 2, and I have a squared. Now the squared's directly with the x, so I'm going to leave that to last. Leave whatever's directly with the pronumeral to last. The opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. And now I'm left with x squared on this side. What's the opposite of squared? That's simple, square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. Square root of 16 equals 4. Now if that wasn't a whole number, I would leave it in its third form, which is square root of whatever. For example, if that was square root of 7, I would leave x equals square root of 7 as the final answer. But because this simplifies to an integer, I can leave it as that. Let's go on to the last example. So I have 3 plus x over 6. Now this looks very similar to example 4. So we do the same thing x over 6, leave whatever is directly with the pronumeral to last, get rid of the minus 3 on both sides, minus 3, minus 3, and then I'm left with x divided by 6, so the opposite of divided by 6 is times 6 on both sides, and I get x equals 582. Now don't get scared if you get a big, big weird number. If you've done the steps right, it's correct. Now, how do we know if we're getting the right answer? Well, it's quite simple. We can check our answers by substituting back into the original question. So for example, with question 1, let's say, x equals 8. That's what we got. So we can substitute this 8 into the original question where the x is. 2x, or in this case, 2 times 8 equals 16. 16 plus 5 does equal 21. So you've got the right answer there. So you can always check your answer by substituting back in. And if you don't know how to do that, watch the video on substitution. Now, I've got a few questions here that I'd like you to do. Pause the video, try the questions out yourself, see how you go, and then unpause it for the recommended answers. There you have the recommended answers. Hopefully you got them all right. If you didn't, go back and watch the video again just to make sure you can clarify where you're going wrong. Hopefully that helped. Take care, guys.